So tonight, we're going to be talking about seven steps to prayer that brings results. How many of us want results when we pray? Seven steps to prayer that brings results. Everybody have your hand out? Praise the Lord. Let's, well, our first foundational scripture is Matthew 21, 21 through 22. Matthew chapter 21, verse 21 through 22. I've read a lot of church blogs and everything, and uh, it is noted that prayer is the least attended event that a church have, but it should be the most because prayer is the foundation. Jesus spent a lot of time in prayer. Prayer is foundational for our lives. Amen. But it is the least attended function in the church, and I believe it's the least attended function because we haven't been seeing results. And, you know, we as people, if something we're doing is not getting us the desired results, we'll stop doing it. So we know that prayer works. So perhaps we need to dig a little deeper in, stir up our faith tonight to know that prayer is very powerful. Prayer will get results. Everything that God says, everything that God says, it works Amen. And prayer works. How we look at it depends entirely upon what you believe. So I believe prayer works. I believe prayer is necessary. I believe prayer is important. Not just intercessory prayer at church, but prayer every day. Prayer is communication with the Father. Amen. So we're going to let the scriptures talk to us tonight. Matthew chapter 21, verse 21 through 22. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith, anybody in the room have faith tonight? If you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, It shall be done, and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Jesus said, if you have faith, well, we all have faith, and doubt not, you shall not only do this, To the fig tree, you remember, he cursed the fig tree. And when they came back the next day, it was withered up from the roots. And his disciples were just amazed that it was withered up. But he said, the same thing you saw me do to the fig tree, you were able to do that also. He said, all things. He didn't say some things. He said, all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer and believing you shall receive. So you have to ask. Believe, then receive. That's the way it works. You ask, you believe, and you receive. Jesus said this, so you know it's the truth. It's the truth. And all things. I had such fun with the Lord today, and I was just talking to him, and and I said, Lord, uh, there are things that we know partial. We, we don't know the fullness of it, but we're coming after you. Because everything you said will produce results in our lives. And so we just don't know all we need to know right now. We never put the blame on God. It is never God's fault. It's never Jesus' fault. Never the Holy Spirit's fault. If there's any deficit in our faith, it's on our end. And all, what you do with the deficit is you just start filling up more on the word of God, and the word will take care of that deficit. So he says, and we, we just have to settle that, look on that wall over there too, over there. The word of God is what? So what did he just say? And all things, 
whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Now, look over on this wall. God is not a man <laughs> that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. He doesn't change his mind. That's, I, you know, I just be so blessed when I think about nothing I do, nothing you do, nothing we do will ever make God change his mind about us. Do y'all know how comforting that is, how reassuring that is? Oh, he, if he said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he'll make it good. He'll cause it to come to pass. So we're just going to have to get in in the word more and more until it gets so rooted and so grounded in ourselves that we'll be like Jesus. We won't have any doubt. We, Jesus had no doubt whatsoever. He, everything, he just 100% believed the Father. And I said, we're well on our way. Amen. We're well on our way. Let's look at Mark eleven twenty four. In this dispensation, believing is the work that we do. That's our part. That's our part, believe. We have to believe. Believe the word, believe what he said, believe in the Holy Spirit. Just believe. That's our, and it's work to believe because a lot of times there are so many outward situations and circumstances trying to make us doubt God. Always trying to make us second guess God. That's it. His greatest joy is to get you. What if Eve? Now God knows if you eat of this tree, his, that's been His mo from the beginning. From the He hadn't changed either. He's still dirty and low down. He's still deceitful. He still wants to uh, make you question God's love for you. And if we don't stay in the Word and allow the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with confidence toward what he said, then we'll be like Eve. We'll take of that fruit, we'll taste it, and then we'll wonder why we're naked. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, listen, when you pray, not if you pray, Prayer is fundamentally, foundationally important in the lives of every believer. It says, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. When you pray, believe. Not after you get it. Not after you get it. See, a lot of us start believing after we take possession of that's That's the wrong order. You pray, believe you have it, then you'll receive it. You, when you pray and believe, you pray as though you already have possession of it. I'm not going to be healed. I am healed. That's what the word says. I'm not going to be healed. I'm already healed. It is being manifested. The word of God is quickening my body. Quicken means to make alive. Have you ever cut your fingernail or your toenail and you cut it too close and you say you got it down to the quick? It did something to your whole body, didn't it? It quickened. I mean, that pain quickened. So that's what the word of God is doing every day in our lives. It's quickening us. Every time you sit down and read the word, every time you spend time fellowshipping with God and in his prayer, that word is quickening you. That word is making you alive. That word is casting light in places of darkness. The Bible says if your eye be single, then your whole body will be full of light. And God wants that light to come into every dark place and light it up where you can see that you can have what the word says you can have. So it says, when you pray. Now, that should be something that every believer do every day. But sad to say, some believers don't pray until they get in a hard place or until trouble show up. And then they try to pray. How many of you know it is better to put a roof on the house when it's sun shining and it's clear than when it's raining and the wind is blowing and all that. So a lot of times until trouble come, we don't feel like we need to pray. 
But pray is always communicating and returning God's word to him. So every day as a believer, we need to pray. You don't have to be on your knees to pray. You know, while you, those of you that work on jobs, eight hours, you can pray. And you, you, you know, you don't make a spectacle of yourself. You can pray silently. Uh, you can pray washing the dishes, cleaning your house, washing the car, doing your God, cutting the grass. I mean, that you're always in God's presence, so you can always cultivate the attitude of prayer. Prayer is so important. So look at Roman numeral one on your sheet. It says, prayer that brings results must, must, underline that, must, God has given us the prescription, must be based on God's word. You start with the answer, which is the word. Prayer that brings results must be based on God's word. Now, do you see why some prayers do not get answered? Because if you have not been in the word, you don't know what the word says, then you're praying the problem. A lot of times when we go to God in prayer, we pray the problem. We don't pray the answer. We tell God how bad it is. How, you know, whatever the situation, whatever the circumstance. Always pray the answer. Always. And the answer is always the word of God. The doctor gave you a report, and he says that, you know, so-and-so is in your body. You just go to Isaiah 53, 4, and 5, open up, but he was wounded. Pray the answer. God, this is what the doctor said, but this is what I believe. I believe that by your stripes I'm already healed. I believe. I'm not denying the report. See, now it's, it's, it's a difference in denying the truth. God never told you to deny the truth. If you go to the doctor and he sees something in your body and medically the reports and everything line up, you've got the symptoms in your body. Medically, it's true. You're not denying that it's there, but you defy it's right to stay there. See, that's what we do. You defy it's right because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, doctor said, I've got arthritis in my knees. But, Lord, by your stripes I'm already healed. You bore all my sickness, weakness, and pain. And I thank you, God, that healing is being manifested in my body even now. Even with the symptoms there, God, I thank you that this is temporary. Your word is more powerful than the doctor's report. So I decree I'm healed. Needs, be healed in Jesus' name. Pain, get out of my body in Jesus' name. That's how you're praying the answer. You're agreeing with God because he says it's already done. So instead of saying, well, you know, tell, well, the doctor say, you know, I got arthritis in my knees. And it's going to be, see, you're talking the problem. You need to talk the answer. You need to, you don't deny the answer. God never told us to lie. Y'all look real <laughs> excited. <laughs> he, he didn't tell us to lie about what is. But he said, you take the word and you defy it. When the Tori and Kevin got the report about Vaughn. The doctor's diagnosis was correct. But the word of God was more powerful. That we stood against it with them. They stood against it with it. They defied the enemy to take their son's life. And guess what? Their prayer got results. It got results. He's healed in Jesus' name. He was healed before he rang the bell. He was healed over 2,000 years ago when Jesus took those stripes, but we have to talk in present terms. God said he wants us established in present truth. What is present truth? I'm healed now. I'm whole now. I'm sound now. I have all the money I need now to take care of my bills. That's present truth. That's what God has said. So God said be established in present truth. Let's look at John 15 and 7. Prayer that brings results must be based on God's word. It has to be. That's the found. It has to be. 
based on God's word. John 15 verse 7 says, if, if, that's conditional, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, read with me, and it shall be done unto you. If you abide, if you dwell, if you make my word your habitation, if you spend time with my word, become one with my word, let it dwell in you richly, he said, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Now, when you ask God for something, it must be according to his word. We know it's God's will to be healed. We know it's God's word for you to have the finances that you need to take care of your family. It's God's will for you to have a good, happy marriage. It's God's will for your children uh, to be prospered. That's God's will. So when you pray according to that, amen, what does he say? It shall be. It shall be done unto you. So if you've been praying and not seeing results, the thing is to go back to God and say, Lord, first of all, make sure you're praying the word. Don't allow this thing called T-I-M-E. Don't allow T-I-M-E to make you believe that God didn't hear you from the first moment you prayed, he heard you. From the first moment you prayed, it started being activated. But sometimes that T-I-M-E, it, it, you can get weary because in your mind it should have happened two months ago. But I'm, I'm here, to, here I am two months later. And I'm still standing against with it. Well, after having done all to stand, just keep standing. Because he said, you go back and remind God. He said, come to me. You know, let us sit down and reason together. God, your word said so and so. Make sure that you're not digging your seed up. One thing that we as the body of Christ do, when we pray, we look to see results. And then when we don't see results, we think it didn't work. Because going by what we see with the natural eye, you got to see into the realm of the spirit. I pray for you. I anoint you and lay hands on you. I pray the word of God over you. I walk away from there knowing even if I don't see nothing now, that word is being made alive inside of you. Now it's quickening you. It has already started to go to work on your situation, in your situation. It shall be even as we've spoken. And so you have to make sure that your mouth is not saying things in the waiting period. See, it matters how you wait. Oh, it's so important how you wait. Glory to God. It matters. And see, the reason why the Bible says you have to labor to enter into his rest, because all of our lives we have been trained to believe That what's real is what we can see, what we can feel, what we can taste, what we can touch, and what we can hear. Our five senses. Now, a lot of people say you can't live, but your five senses are good. Your five senses is good. I mean, you go out there driving, you need to be able to see. You need to be able to hear. You want to taste your food. Glory to God. So we need our five senses, but our five senses is what connects us to the earth realm. But we've been so trained so long to believe that if I can't see it, it must not be real. Well, when God said and spoke everything into existence, he took matter not from something but from a world that's more real than the one we see. That's where God wants us to get. When we pray and ask God, it's it's not like it doesn't exist It's in the realm of the spirit. And as you speak and believe, confess, give praise, give honor to God, all it's doing is being downloaded. Have you ever tried to access a file and then say downloading? That's what is being done to you right now. It's being downloaded. (laughs) It's being downloaded from your spirit into your soul. 
Now, that's where the fight is in your soul, your mind. Well, it must have not worked because, you know, pray, they laid hands on me yesterday, and I got up this morning, my knee still hurt. No, it did work. God, I thank you. I'm not moved by the pain. I'm moved by the pain. Hands was laid on me. The prayer of faith was prayed over me. I was anointed with oil. I was healed yesterday. And I'm still healed this morning. And you de- let that just continually be your confession and your testimony. Praise God. It is because I'm like you. I'm, I'm ready to see something. I know that the Bible says signs and wonders are for the world. They're not for believers. But even as a believer, I want to see something. Jesus saw it. <laughs> he was speaking. He said, blind eyes be open. They got open. He told the man with the withered hand, put, put forth your hand. The hand was made whole. He didn't see the only difference. Be- <laughs> oh, God. Only difference between Jesus and us. Jesus didn't need to see it to believe. We need to see it to believe. We got to get to the place. We don't need to see it to believe. We're going to see it because we do believe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> First John three twenty two. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. We got we gotta walk in the word, we gotta obey the word of God. Uh that's first John three and twenty two. Because we keep his commandment. His greatest commandment is the commandment of love. We got to make sure we keep our hearts free from strife and bitterness and unforgiveness and anger and walk in love. See, God is love and Jesus was a visible, tangible expression of God in the earth. And guess what? We are a visible, tangible expression of God in the earth. People need to be able to look at us and see what our father is like. We're his, we're, we are his mobile mercy seat in the earth. We're the way he travels in the earth. Amen. He's a good father. 1 John 5 verse 14 through 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, do y'all keep noticing anything or whatsoever thing? If we ask anything according to his will, now we can put his word there and not, ch- not take the scripture out of context. If we ask anything according to his will or his word, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know. See, God wants us to know something. And he don't want you thinking. He don't want you trying to figure out. See, said, God said, I want you to know that you will have the petitions that you have desired to make. He said, this is the confidence. This is the assurance. Or this is the guarantee that we have in him. Why? Because God is honorable. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Because God is a covenant-keeping God. Because God never go back on his word. He never changes. So that's why you can have confidence in him. There are people that we have confidence in because of their character, because they keep their word. So you you have confidence in them. But God said this is the confidence we can have in him. That if we ask anything, when you ask for him, you have a right. To ask for healer. You have a right to ask for your needs to be met. You have a right to ask for your marriage. You have a right to pray for our nation. We have a right to do that. And if we know that he hears us. And he said his ears are always open. To the cries or the prayers of his people. God has never turned a deaf ear to his people. And he never will. And you got to know he hears us. He said whatsoever we ask. We know. And we're basing that on God's reputation. His reputation is untarnished. Glory to God. 
And we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Let's go to Isaiah 55. Verse 8 through 11. Prayers that get results. Wherever there's a deficit in my life, wherever there's a deficit in my faith, God showed me how to build that deficit up. Amen. Isaiah 55, verse 8 through 11. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sore and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. God said, I've given you a visible sign. He no man needs to see. Always, we always want to see. He said, so I show you when the rain comes down. And I show you that it waters the earth. Because God says he's never going to destroy the earth with water again. He puts the bow in the sky to help us to remember that he, he didn't do it for his sake. He did it so we won't forget. And in making it to bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower. And the word of God says the word of God is seed. That word must be planted in the heart, in the soil of our heart, in order for it to bring forth a harvest. He says, so shall my, look at all the shells in there. It's four of them. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall. He didn't say might, he didn't say maybe, he didn't say a possibility. He said, it shall not return unto me void. Well, how do you return the word of God back to him? Through prayer and by saying. That's how you return his word back to him. God is so, I mean, God is so proud when you come into the throne room and you say, Father, you said thus and so. Oh, don't throw the scripture and the verse in there. Ooh, Jesus. And so and so you said this. Lord, you said in the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. God, I thank you. You're my shepherd. You lead me in and out. Father, you know where the green pastures are. You know where the calm waters are. God, I thank you that you said you're my shepherd. So I expect you to lead me into green pastures. God, you're my shepherd. I expect you to restore my soul. This, you go to God, and when you re- that's how you return his word. You, In other words, you tell him what he said. You tell him what he said. Have you ever seen... Uh, lawyers on TV. I, I like to watch uh, Matlock. <laughs> I like to watch lawyers, especially when they say, Your Honor, uh, on the books, this is so and so and so and so. There's a precedence been set. Well, everything that we need from God, there's a precedence been set in the Word of God. And God said, He's no respect of person. Glory to God. And if he healed anybody, healing belongs to me. If he saved anybody, salvation belongs to me. If he blessed anybody financially, finances belong to me because I'm an heir of God and I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And everything that the Father gave Jesus, he gave it to me. So you go there and that's how you do. You pray. The word of God. That's how we go. And say, go oh, the world is out of me. And if you don't do something, I'm going to lose my mind. No, 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 no. That's not the word. That's, that's not. He can't do nothing with that. It's almost like you go to the store, and in the United States, you know what our currency looks like. But if we would bring uh, money from another nation that they use, they won't accept that here from us. Ooh, I just had a thrill. 
we keep trying to go into God's kingdoms with currency that heaven does not allow. The currency that we spend in the kingdom of God is faith. It's faith. You can purchase any and everything from the kingdom of God through faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. When you got faith, you can go and you can buy the, just get your buggies after buggies after buggies and load them up, load them up. Because it's, well, really, truly, it's already been purchased. So you're just going in and get what's been laid up for you. So we got to start using the right currency in the kingdom. You know, you've got all kinds. you got baseball, you got basketball, you got softball, but all of them have different rules that they play by. Even though they're all ball, but you ain't never seen nobody go on the basketball court with a ball and bat. Wrong gear. So a lot of times we're trying to approach God with the wrong gear. So he... He can't do nothing with that. Not that he does not want to. He can't. Because he has already set up when he had this word written from the beginning. And God is not going to change one instruction he gave us here because it was right when he had it written. So it's never going to change it. It's always going to work. It's always going to work. People prayed and God answered. Look at the children of Israel. When God bought them out, I'm telling you, and then they start having kings. One king would come up, he'd be a good king. And then his son would come, he wouldn't be a good son. Then the next king would come up, and maybe that son was worse than the father. And then you'd get a good king, and then he'd be, have a good son. The son would fall out, but then you'd have another king. But every time they cried out to the Lord and repented, God forgave them. Yes. At, not one time. Hey, don't tell me he ain't a long-suffering God. Don't tell me he's not a merciful God. And I mean, every time they would cry to him, his ears were open to the cries of his people, and he would rescue them. Well, he's that same God tonight. He's the same God tonight. That mistake you made, didn't, he didn't just say, okay, right, take her name off. Your name will never be removed. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Look at Roman numeral two. Begin the application of faith, confession. Confession is what we say to ourselves and what we say to the Lord. That's our confession. Our profession is what we say in front of others. Confession. Confession is to say. And you have to say what? You have to use your mouth. You have to use words. Confession. Your confession must line up with the word of God. You're not ready to pray until you know what God said. You are not ready to pray until you have gone into the word of God and found out what the word says about whatever you believe in God for. And listen, beloved, I don't care. It's 2024. But the answer's still in here. There's never, ever going to be a situation, a trial, or anything that's going to come up in your life that the answer is not already written. It's already in here. The thing that gets us in trouble is we don't go looking for it. And we just read, what was the first thing we read? Prayer that brings results must be based on God's word. I'm amazed. I am totally amazed, and I guess maybe I shouldn't be, but I'm amazed at people that spend no time in the word. And you expect to have a strong spirit. You expect to be able to open your mouth. You you can open your mouth. And you expect to be able to go into the throne room of God, but you don't ever read. You don't ever study. You don't ever spend any time with God. You're just a tingling sim on a sounding brass. There's no foundation. The word of God is our foundation. I, I'm, I'm simply amazed when the Bible already tells you, so then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by. 
So if you don't ever hear any word, what's not coming? And so how do you re-receive from God? By faith. So if you're not hearing anything, faith not coming, so you, you, don't, have, you don't have anything to go shopping with. Nothing. You can't even win the shop. The word of God is absolutely the source of our life, y'all. You got to know he said it. You don't have any confidence unless you know he said it. And guess what? God knows whether you know it or not. Well, you know, I think I heard apostle say something about, uh, when, what did she say? When, there, there's no faith there. There's no faith there. You got to be able to go into the word of God for yourself and get that word anchored down in your heart and you speak it with confidence. It says, one, believe you receive when you pray. Look at that, believe, that's first. Receive, then pray. But this is the way we do it. We, well, we pray. Receive, believe. That's the order we got it in. That's out of order. It won't work. You got to believe first. You got to believe. Believe you receive it. God, I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful, Lord, that you sent your word and your word has healed me. Even though, Father, there are symptoms in my body, I stand on Psalms 105, verse 20. You sent your word. And your word has healed me. First Peter 2, 24, you took and you all this in your own body on the tree. And by your stripes, you were, you were healed. See yourself with whatever you believe. When you pray, see it, see it. God, I see myself living in that. I see myself walking in that. God, I see myself. I have it now. Because whenever you say God is going to, that's future tense. No, he already has. Now, let me, let me give you some balance here. When you're talking to people that don't get this word, <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to do that. Child, God has blessed me with, I got my new car. Praise God, I'm driving my new car. I got my new car. I thank you for it, Lord. God, I see it as whatever color and whatever. I thank you, God. Now, if you're talking to somebody that does not have this teaching or know to call things that be not, and you take them to your garage and they say, let me see it. Let me see it. You raise up the garage, they're going to call you a liar. They're going to call you a liar. But you got you to gotta see yourself with. It's not so important that we make anybody else believe. What do you believe? What do you see? You're going to have what you see. You're going to have what you say. It's not important that I get you to believe that I already have. I got to believe I've got it because the word says I have it. And I know I may get up today and the pain may be there. Well, I get up tomorrow, my confession is going to be the same. I get up the next day, however long it takes. And then one morning you get up and you say, I don't even know when it left. I don't know when it's left. But we're this microwave generation. We want to pray now and we want God to do it. Like that. But he been talking to us about stuff. We still ain't got around to it. But his ears are open. If he did it for a generation that did not have a covenant, did not have this better covenant, based on better promises, God's ears are still, all we got to do is turn. Repent means to turn. It's not enough to turn away from something. You got to turn to something. Glory to God. So God wants you to know his ears are open to your prayer. You know, it's so, we're based so much on what we do instead of what God has done. That's why some of us are not seeing results because we are measuring ourselves up as to why God should do it. No, God should do it because based on what Jesus has done. It's not about your do, it's about your who. Who live in you? Who died for you? Who did the finished work? That's what it's about. But we start measuring ourselves. And, well, I, I, I probably know why I don't have any faith. Yeah, God said he's given to every man the measure of faith. 
You couldn't get saved without it. If you say saved tonight, you got faith. He's given every man the measure of faith. So we need to get excited about prayer. Lord, I'm going, ooh, I'm going here and change things. My words are powerful. My words carry weight. Prophet Miller called me this morning. We was on the phone for an hour and a half. We prayed for everything that turned. <laughs> Glory to God. And we believe we have what we said. Amen. We covered y'all. I'm telling y'all, we called y'all name. We covered this house. Gloria, que la lo bochata. Roco tele que eso no bose, que la lo bochaya. Ooh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And we believe we're going to have what we said because we prayed it based on the word. God said we could have what we say. Thank you, Jesus. Hold fast to your confession. That's number two. You got to hold fast to it because we have an enemy that's arrayed against us. We have an adversary that is always trying to take from you what God has already given you. You're not waiting for God to do something. He's already done it or the enemy wouldn't have anything to be trying to steal. He wants to steal your faith. He wants to steal the word of God out of your heart. He wants to weary you and wear you down and bring distractions and things in your life to make you doubt the word of God. But God is trustworthy. Oh, hold fast to your confession. Hebrews 4, 11 through 16. How many of you know God's trustworthy tonight? He's a keeping God. Ooh, how many times have he kept me, stood by me, made ways for me. And it wasn't based on me. It was based on the finished works of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hold fast to your confession. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, we, I, I think we get in a place and Sometimes even in, the, in a battle, if the battle has been going on for a while, sometimes we can get a little weary. That's when you need to call for help. But some of us got something called P-R-I-D-E. You know you're drowning. But you don't want to let nobody know. Find somebody that you know is a prayer warrior. You don't need another naysayer. You know, you, you, you don't, you know, if you leave and uh, even though Ava and Destiny are 10 now, I'm still not going to leave them at home by themselves. They don't have the maturity that's there when I'm there. So you got to hold fast to your confession because there's an enemy is struggling to take away. He's striving every day, cunning to take away. He wants to take away your joy. He wants everything to say to offend you. Because a, a man, a brother that's offended is harder to be one than a city without walls. He wants you offended. He wants you in strife. Why she say that? Uh huh. That's what I thought. See, the enemy start playing here. He start playing in your soul. That's not at all what I meant at all. I didn't. I don't, I'm not even aware you even think that. See, he starts trying to wear you down, and he gets you looking at people. He gets you where you can't trust nobody. You can't trust God. Oh, y'all looking real solemn. Oh, there's a lot of believers that life has backed them into a corner where it's hard for them to even trust God. So when you get in a position like that, you need to call for help. Call for somebody you know that believes the word. Call for somebody that you know is going to undergird you and encourage you and build you up. That's who you need. And don't tell me it ain't nobody. It's somebody. God don't give us all somebody. <laughs> Glory to God that you can call. But if you get in pride, you ain't going to call nobody. And you just suffer needlessly. Call for help. When Peter was sinking, 
Glory to God. He was the only one who had the nerve to get out of the boat. The rest of them onlookers. He was the one swung that leg over that boat, got out on that water. Peter couldn't walk on the water when the waves wasn't billowing and tumultuous. No man had ever walked on water. But at the word of the Lord come, he got out of that boat. And when he began, when he took his eyes, that's what I love about God. See, you can start with God and mess up. God's still going to come walking to you on the water. And if you call help, God's still going to reach down and get you out of trouble, get you back to the boat, and let's do this again. Hallelujah. You can run to God when you can't run to nobody else. Peter sinking, he just cried. He wasn't no, well, you know, Father, I did, I confessed it. No, he didn't. He just said, help! God reached down and got him. When we mess up, we think we got to spend an hour confessing and beating ourselves. And in the Old Testament, they cut themselves and all. You ain't got to do all that. Just say, Father, I missed it. I repent and get up and move it on. And God's ears are still open. He's still there. God said he'll help you if you cause the trouble yourself. Oh, he's faithful. He's a good God. He's merciful. I've tasted of that mercy. Oh, yeah, I've been a recipient of his long suffering and his mercy and his goodness. I've been a recipient and still a recipient, praise God. And I thank God for it. Hebrews 4, 11 through 16. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Sometimes it's not that you don't have faith. We may have more unbelief than we have faith. Picture two of those great big Clydesdale horses, one on this end and one on that end, same exact weight, size, everything. You get them to pull in. Well, one is just as strong as the other. So one cancels out the other. The, it still ain't going to move. If you want to move, you're going to have to put them both together and let them go in the same direction. A lot of times, we have as much unbelief. Unbelief is nothing but doubt. Unbelief, and Jesus had none. Unbelief is, is nothing more than doubting. And he said they fell after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick, is powerful, and is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God said in one scripture that you have not because you ask amiss. You ask to consume it on your own lust. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens... Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Not just what we say to him and ourselves, what we're saying out here, your profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need now listen to this look at 15 for we have not a high priest we have a high priest Jesus is our savior he's also the high priest of our confession you remember in the old covenant they would come and the high priest, they had priests that were in the outer courts, but then they had a high priest, and he was the only one that could go behind the veil and sprinkle the blood for the remission of sins for all of the people. He was the only one. Well, we have a great high priest. Oh, but he's passing to the heavens. And when he got up and went into heaven, he sprinkled his blood on the mercy seat. 
And that blood is there testifying today that all of our sins have been forgiven. Every sickness, weakness, and disease has been healed. See, that's in God's ears all day. That blood is speaking. That blood is crying out. That blood is saying, she's mine. That blood is saying, I died for her. So when you go to God, God is not looking at you. He's looking at you through the blood. He's looking at you as though you never sinned. He's looking at you as washed. Remember we looked last week and said we stand before God blameless? We stand before God blameless. A lot of us don't even want to go into the presence of God because you think God looking at you. No, God looking at you through Jesus. He looking at you through the blood of Jesus. He looking at you through what Jesus paid the ransom. There's nothing old. God is not looking at you. When that invitation, let us therefore come bold into the throne, that's an invitation to your soul. Because when you got born again, the Bible says we're seated in heavenly places. He's talking about your spirit. Spiritually, we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. This invitation is an invitation to your soul, your mind, to your will, to your emotions, to your intellect, to your personality, your even your imagination. He said, bring your soul, the place that gives you the most trouble. Bring your soul to the throne of grace. Let me fill it with the word of God. Let me assure you, and that blood on the mercy seat, it's just crying and saying, oh, she's forgiven. <laughs> See, you go to God and you think you got to pray an hour to be forgiven. You think God going to remember. No, that blood, mm-mm, it's there crying. It says Abel's blood was crying from the ground, and it was crying for vengeance. The blood of Jesus is crying. It's a much louder voice. And it's crying, now has come salvation. (laughs) Strength, the kingdom of our God. The accuser of the brethren has been cast down. And they overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. That's what you got blood on the mercy seat every day saying she's washed. (laughs) She's washed. Satan can no longer go into the heavens and accuse you. The accuser of the brethren has been cast down. I was reading Job, and it was saying how Satan came when, the, when they came before God, and God asked him, he said, where are you coming from? He said, from going to and fro in the earth. Hey, what was he doing? Looking for somebody to devour. But I tell you, it won't be me. And it ain't going to be you. He's searching. He's going, look at, look, going to and fro. To and fro in the earth. And see, then he was permitted to go and accuse Job. But in this new dispensation, no ma'am. The accuser of the brethren has been cast down. And Jesus, God said, I said, Jesus into the world to save the world and not condemn the world. That's why there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So every time you show up in the throne room, God is glad to see you. His ears are open. He see you washed. He see you clean. He see you sanctified. He see you justified. He see you as though you never sinned. That's how he see you. That's how he see. Now we got to learn to see ourselves that way. Learn to see who you are in Christ. We look so much better in him. Than we do outside of him. Amen. He says. Verse B. We're going to stop there. Act as though it was already done. That's James 2. 14 through 24. It says to be afraid. To confess. Or act as though. It is already done. Is to read. Well I don't want to tell. People, I'm healed, and uh, they, they, they still know to be afraid to confess or act as though it is already done is to doubt God's word. What does James 2, 14, what does the prophet, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works, can faith save him? 
If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. The devils know there's a God, but they're not living for God. They're not serving God. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? That works is corresponding action. That's what the work says, corresponding action. That corresponding action is that your words line up with what's already been said. That's how you know. That's that corresponding action. That's the works he's talking about. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God. Do y'all believe God? Abraham believed God. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith. You you say you have faith. Then you got to have corresponding action. Your words must line up. You got it. Oh, yeah, I'm full of Jesus' joy. Wait, why are you looking like this? You got to have some corresponding action. If you believe you heal, your word should be agreeing that you're healed. That's got to be, you got to act like it's so. When you believe that God is going to do something for you financially, go ahead and get those bills together. Glory to God. God, and just start thank God I thank you that my house is paid off in Jesus' name. God, I thank you my car is paid off in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for promotion. I thank you for increase. Act like you already got it. Oh, we're going on vacation this summer. Glory to God. I don't know how you're going to do it, God, but I'm a tithe and a giver, and I'm a good steward over what you put in my hand. And God, you said that this was the season that you were going to get wealth to the believer. Well, I'm a believer, so I'm going to go ahead and start looking at some places. that See, you got to have some corresponding action. I'm going to start looking at some places. That me and my family can go and it's not going to take away anything from what we need to do here because we are honorable. That's corresponding action. Based on the word of God. God will give you strategy. Now you don't take, you already know you're balanced enough to know. You pray, you believe, you pray, you receive. You believe, you pray, you receive. God will work it out. Don't get in the concept, well, line up, we're going here. You ain't got to know. God will give you wisdom. But go ahead and act, get ready. Go ahead. Next year we're going to do this. Or this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to have in our new home. This, this is this will go, honey. Can you see it? This is what we're gonna have here. This is what we're gonna have there. Yeah, I said, woo, baby, it's coming together. Yes, it's coming together. That's corresponding action. That's the works that God's telling us to do. That's the work. We we get it mixed up with performance, like the old covenant. They had to perform. No, the works here is believing. Believing what He said. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, I believe. We had a meeting the other night. And we had this chart that Pastor Teller had uh, when we paid off the building. And Kevon said, you know, sometimes people can get more involved with something when they can see it. So we, 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 we're going to build a church. We're going to build a church. So we're going to get us a new chart. And we're going to start seeing it grow. We're going to start seeing it grow because we're going to have a new church. And we're going to have in it everything that God wants us to have to fulfill the vision that he has given this ministry. 
But if we can see it growing, see, that's why you got to see, oh, yes, God, I thank you. Whatever car you're believing for, get a picture of that car and put it up. And every time, you, God, I just thank you. I thank you for my new car, God. Oh, Lord, I bless you, Lord Jesus. Now, while you're thanking, take care of the one you got. <laughs> take care of the one you got. Or whatever you're believing for, get a picture. Of, or if, if, you, if it's something in your own body, get a picture when you were the size you wanted to be. Put that picture. God, I thank you. Yeah, kid. God, I thank you. Hallelujah. I will look like this again because you're helping me. Holy Spirit, you're going to show me what I need to do. That's corresponding. That. That's the works he's talking about. Those are, we'll just, we'll stop right there. If God willing, we'll start back here next Wednesday because it is so good. But just think to be afraid to confess or act as though it is already done is to doubt God's word.